When you start to lose your situational awareness, a term that we use, red flag, and you've all used them, will appear. These are just a few of them. Ambiguity, unresolved discrepancy, preoccupations. Any of you ever tired at work? We're all, we're all tired at work. When you start to notice red flags, it's the beginning of your loss of situ situational awareness. What we do to help us keep situational awareness and not have as many red flags is we get into then the field of checklists. So derived originally from um, the airline industry, the use of checklists. You've all probably seen the WHO surgical safe uh, checklist. This is not rocket science. Now, I've highlighted the things that you know, are, are the obvious things. There's a site mark. Dif is this going to be a difficult case for the anesthesiologist? The site is confirmed in the operating room. Are there any anticipated critical events? Antibiotics given at the appropriate time. The counts are correct uh, afterwards, and any concerns for the recovery room. The issue is these things have to be done every single time because you will forget things along the way. You cannot do this from memory. It needs to be done from a checklist. There's some debate as to whether, whether the human brain can, can capture four or seven things at one time and remember them. So it's no more than seven, and there's about 18 items on here. You are not going to remember, the nurse is not going to remember every single thing. It needs to be done uh, specifically in order. When they uh, did this, originally they asked the nurses and doctors, anesthesiologists, if you were having surgery, would you want to have a checklist used? And almost every one of them said, absolutely, yes. They get it. This has been studied. There are multiple studies. The last one in the New England Journal of Medicine about two years ago. In the Netherlands, 11 hospitals divided into trained and untrained, very good quality hospitals. Uh, they trained um, men, all the staff. About six or 7,000 patients were evaluated. And after the study, uh, the mortality went down 50%. Reoperation went down 50%. Wound infection went down 30%. All of the studies have shown the same good outcomes following this kind of team training. And the benefits, decreased errors in the operating room, decreased morbidity and mortality, decreased length of stay, decreased malpractice claims, decreased staff turnover because you're talking to the nurses. You're tre treating them like humans and equals. Increased overall patient care, patient satisfaction, and MD and staff quality of life go up because everybody's getting along. 